Hey everybody, welcome to the Future Podcast. I'm your host Sean Donlan, and I'm here today with a very special guest, Taylor Huey. How are you? Good, thanks. I'm happy to be here. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Um, so to give people, I suppose, that are new listeners an overview of the podcast, this is the Future Podcast. We basically we bring on um, industry industry experts, professionals, and they tell us a little bit about themselves, how they got to where they were, and I suppose the challenges they've faced and the challenges they're experiencing now and a little bit about their uh, uh, backgrounds and careers. So if you wouldn't mind, I suppose, giving the audience um, uh, a little intro for yourself. Always the hardest part. It's like, how do you introduce yourself? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm born and raised in Vancouver, BC. Um, I grew up here in a family owned business. Um, entrepreneurship, I think, was always in my blood. Uh, my grandparents started a garden center um, when they first immigrated here from China, and then my dad took it over with my uncle, and um, I grew up working there my entire life, and I think that kind of fueled me to understanding just the world of business and what it takes to really see a business grow in the time and effort. It's a nonstop challenge, um, but once you kind of are on the grind and see the results. It can be quite addicting, I find. Um, so myself, I started a charity when I was uh, 16 years old. We provide oh. content. Yeah. So quite young, I um, I was just was really impacted by the amount of females that I grew up with that struggled with body confidence and body positivity, myself included. Had a lot of friends with eating disorders. Um, just life events that were around me that realized that there weren't resources for young girls to have that safe space to talk about how they feel and um, issues that they might be going through with mental health. So I started that when I was about 16 and um, we're a Canadian charity now and work with young girls across BC and actually across Canada with the recent events of COVID actually, I can dive into that after. But um, reaching girls across Canada now. Um, and through kind of the last like seven years of building that organization, um, I also ended up starting a clothing line. So it's called The Roster. Originally it was just supposed to be like a one-time thing uh, to raise money for the organization. And uh, now it's my full-time job, um, but still kicks back to the NGO, which is great. So we've got constant revenue coming in from a charitable side. Um, and now I get to dabble into the world of fashion, which I love. I've done a bit of modeling myself, lived in Asia for four years doing it. And so just have fallen in love with the creative side of the fashion industry. So I feel really blessed to be able to be in two passion projects that are my jobs. Cool. And uh where in, in Asia did you live? Was it, is it in China where your family is from or? So I'm half Chinese. So um, my grandparents are from Hong Kong, um, one side of them. Uh, the other side's British. But yeah, I worked in Hong Kong for about a year. But um, I traveled, traveled around on contracts. So I was in the Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, wow. uh, Shanghai. Yeah, I got to see a lot of places. Um, one of my favorites was probably the Philippines, actually. Just yeah. really felt like I was home there. Um, and there's actually quite a big commercial and like TV industry there, which was interesting to me. Um, so I got to play around in that as well. So yeah, I love Asia. I'm very upset I can't get on a plane right now and go. <laughs> yeah, you and a lot of people. Um, so obviously with everything going on, how has that affected the, uh, the charity and your clothing line? It's been interesting. So we had a lot of programs scheduled because uh, we run in-person classes at schools, at recreation centers, literally any facility that welcomes us. And obviously when the restrictions hit, we weren't able to have any of those in-person classes. So we actually were able to move all of our programs online, which has been really exciting. Um, and that's kind of been the switch is we used to only reach girls within BC due to like our physical distance of where we're located. Um, but now all of our six week programs are digital girls across Canada can register. We still have the exact same amount of time with them. It's a two hour program. We bring in guest speakers. We do workshops. Um, it's just all over good old zoom. So it's been a new transition, um, but so welcomed. And I think for us as a team, it's allowed us to like be innovative and really push our boundaries to reach more young girls um, and not be limited by just in-person contact. We now have that digital experience. Obviously, we still miss seeing, we, we, we miss seeing them in person, but 
you kind of have to do a give and take right now. Um, so that's kind of on, I would say it's a plus side on the foundation. We really have seen the benefit of going online um, with the clothing line, kind of the same thing. Like e -com has really spiked, which has been great great. I'm actually mostly wholesale. So that has been a difficult, difficult transition. Um, a lot of our boutiques obviously closed that we're in. So, um, they are now reopening. So now we're seeing like our second spike of sales. Um, but it's been a cool experience to also grow my online presence. So trying yeah. to make the most of it. Yeah. Well, at least uh, you're adapting. It sounds, sounds like you certainly are. So that's yeah, I feel like you have to, I mean, it's funny with my parents' garden center, like I still help, help out there when I can. And, um, they thought they weren't going to be considered an essential service and then they were but in that blurry time of a week that they closed we actually built them an e-com site as well just because it was like well we could deliver plants to you and you could do your gardening and you know everyone's stuck at home anyways and so it's funny they have now like seen a whole new business growth online as well so i think it's provided an opportunity for companies to get creative Anytime I've, uh, it's funny that you say that, anytime I've been near a garden center, there's just been queues outside. Yeah. People are, yep. Yeah, you guys, it must be experienced that people are trying to get the gardening in now, you know? Well, and that's just it. It's like, even for myself, I never touched my patio until literally this year because I can't like go to the parks and I can't <laughs> hang out as much as I'd like to at the beach. Um, so yeah, I've heard people say like, well, we canceled all our Europe trip, so we may as well redo our backyard because that's where we will be this summer. Yeah. Well, obviously, no. some, you know, it's tragic, like people have lost their lives and stuff and, you know, people have lost their jobs. And, but I think a lot of people are going to look back at this, the people who weren't, you know, married by it. And they're going to be like, it's kind of nice, you know? You yeah. Know? And it's, it's funny, really like I've heard, I've heard a mix, right? Like I think, yeah. like you said, it's been super devastating on so many levels. And honestly, on an economic level, it's been very hard. And I think it'll be a few years till we really come out of it. Um, that being said, I think it's allowed us to really reflect on the people we like really want to spend our time with and the things that we really enjoy doing, not taking those things for granted anymore. You know, I think a lot of people, it's easy to get caught up, especially in work and in your lifestyle. And then when all that's removed and you can't even see your family, you really start to look at, okay, these are actually the things that I should be focusing on and prioritizing because you just don't know when that can get removed or taken away from you. Yeah, you don't. And like, and for the people that are, you know, living close to their families or who have older relatives and you're thinking, oh, like, like I can't go and visit this person because, you know, they're at risk or, or I'm at risk. And yeah, it's a frightening thing. It really makes you realize how, you know, fragile everything is. No, and absolutely. And where, if you can, if I can ask, where are you from? Because no, I know. I'm yeah, I, okay. Is um, your family here? No. So I have one brother that lives here, but I have a very big family. I have four brothers and four sisters. Oh my God. <laughs> no <laughs> kidding. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Traditional Roman Catholic Irish family. I and, love uh, yeah, big, always big, huge families. So uh, I'm the youngest of that family. My brother moved here about 12 years ago. I came on vacation then maybe six years ago, loved it. And uh, three years later, then I moved over. So I've been living here for three years. Uh, love it. Incredible city. I moved here with my uh, long-term girlfriend, and uh, yeah, we, we love the city. So. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. But it must be challenging for you though at the same time because you don't have family, like other than your brother. You know, your immediate family isn't here. Yeah, we were having this conversation. Uh, not to talk too much about me, as I was. Yeah, doing sorry. That. I'm like here. I'm gonna interview. <laughs> <you. laughs> I'm like interested to know. Yeah, how we you're having. This, we were having this conversation myself and my girlfriend, and we were saying, like, we come from a place where there's no. There's no like blizzards, there's no snow, there's no storms, there's no tsunamis, no volcanoes, nothing. It's just totally mild like Vancouver. It's a, it's a bit wet, yeah. but you never have to worry about earthquakes, anything like that. And then when we moved to, uh, so we've had like this like sheltered life because of just our geographical location. Yeah. And then we moved to Vancouver and when the whole world goes into lockdown, like where we're from, went into, went into really, really bad lockdown. Like you couldn't leave your house. You could only go two kilometers or three kilometers outside of your home. So it's Europe. So, you know, they had real strict mandates and we were just, you know, sauntering around BC. You could go anywhere you wanted in BC, essentially. So it was easy for us. So we were thinking like, wow, like we, we really hit the, the, uh, the jackpot, you know, cause we could have went to the States or we could have went to England and those places were, you know, obviously you don't need to tell you what's going on in those places right now. It's, it's, it's crazy. So we feel like totally blessed and very lucky for, you know, it was, it was strange and I have my brother here, so we got to spend time with them, but 
I think we had it as good as we could possibly have it. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, Vancouver, especially, even considered within Canada, we are in a very, knock on wood now that I say that, we are in a very good place, um, which also I think is why like, I can talk about so much of the positive that has been able to come out of this. Yeah. Like you said, I think if we were, you know, have, if we were a business in Italy or in parts of China right now, obviously things would be looking a lot different yes. and the outcome of our business would be a bit different. Um, but with the beautiful place that we live in and the privilege we have of technology and Wi-Fi access and all these things that, you know, have gotten me through this whole experience, I really am grateful because I know that's not, it's not the everyday thing for people, you know? Yeah. From talking to you, you don't seem like somebody who just feels sorry for themselves. Somebody, well, obviously somebody who runs as many businesses and successful businesses as you realize that there's ups and downs. And, you know, I know older people are at risk, but at, you know, our age or younger age group, you're more likely to die in a car crash on the way to work than you are, you know? A guy said to me yesterday, he said, if I give you a million dollars, he said, you couldn't, you can't get on a plane, but I give you a million dollars to get COVID in Vancouver in 24 hours. He said, you wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> it's like, even if you tried. <laughs> like, even if you tried. Uh, but, hey, you know what? It's a good situation to be in though right now. Because I think in a lot of other places, I, you could take the million dollars and because you would get it. <laughs> Uh, I haven't heard that one. That's funny. Well, I thought it was a very good one. It's like, if I give you a million dollars, you, you couldn't get it. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of touch on your charity again, as a young, uh, as a young lady, like setting that up, that must've been very empowering and you must've made some incredible, um, you know, lifelong friends. It's been, I can't, I can't even begin to describe how life changing the entire experience has been. So we actually just became a charity, like officially, um, in December of 2019. So we were like an NGO and they technically are called societies within Canada. Um, yeah. We finally got that charitable number and could like write tax receipts and be known like across Canada. So it's been um, such a huge curve even since getting that charitable number. It's been amazing for us. Um, but yeah, it's Overall, the most beautiful experience, definitely ups and downs. I've had to fight to the bitter end to make sure that this foundation continues. And especially when I started something so young, people really doubted my yeah. ability, my professionalism, what what was I accountable for? I, you know, at that time, I didn't have any degrees under my belt. I wasn't even graduated high school. So it's tough, like being in a room when you're young female and don't have a ton of experience under your belt that looks good on a resume and I say that because I felt like I had so much life experience I had had friends with eating disorders I was really cyber bullied um I had so many friends struggling with mental health I myself found that school didn't provide me a safe place to talk to people like all these things that happened in my life that maybe weren't textbook learning but it was life learning and I really argue that that is more valuable, especially when you're trying to connect with young women, to just be honest and have that vulnerable dialogue continue as opposed to trying to read something out of a textbook and then go and practice it. It's a lot harder that way, to be honest. Like life experience, I think, gives you that perspective and that understanding that a classic, a, a classic education system maybe wouldn't. So uh -huh. yeah, I don't know. It's been... Um, it's been a real, yeah, like I said, beautiful journey and I'm super grateful for where I am. But like you said, I've met some of my best friends I've met through this foundation now. And um, we have a team of about 120 mentors. So oh, wow. yeah, a really big team that like guest speakers, mentors, um, just like powerful females that have so much insight and have their own story to share. And I think at the end of the day, that's like what I love most. It's females inspiring females. And being able to like kind of coach that younger generation to come up and be brave and be resilient and know their self-worth. I think it's so important more now than ever, especially with social media, um, just to make sure that you know who you are and that you're valued. Um, not so much for what you look like, obviously, but what's inside and what you bring to this, to this earth. Yeah. I can imagine social media being very, uh, you know, it was Facebook and stuff. It was just kind of really hitting hard. Did you guys have Bebo? uh in in canada is that the blackberry thing i don't know it was like a weird uh social media before it's kind of like myspace before facebook but uh, facebook just kind of came out when we were in kind of leaving high school and 
I couldn't imagine, you know, with how addictive it is uh, right now, I couldn't imagine like having it basically from like the age of, you know, 10 or 11 and then, and then up. And I'm sure obviously because girls are so image conscious, it must, there must be a lot of pressure on, on young women, all the young guys that I know, they're just looking at videos of, you know, supercars going around the place or, you know, explosions or stuff. Yeah, also, yeah. And that's guys. They're just like, whatever, you know, totally. Uh, their marketing is, is, is kind of to get them, you know, excited on a new movie or something like that. But I do see a lot, a lot of, uh, the advertising geared towards you and women, it must definitely play, you know, play with your mind a little bit because nobody's perfect. And if you look at like the models that are out there and, and how, uh, I suppose not the models itself, but how they're airbrushed and things like that, like, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I actually just taught a class yesterday online and it was, it's about media literacy and it's exactly all of that. So taking apart media itself and the ways in which beauty standards are manip manipulated and altered and basically, for example, like how Instagram is so much a highlight reel. Mm. And I talk a lot about this on my own Instagram page that you only really ever see the highs. You don't often see the lows. And when you do, even then they're very catered towards a certain image that we want you to see um and just making girls aware of that like the young girls i taught yesterday they're eight to ten most of them had instagram profiles which is like crazy young to me but a lot of them were already on social media knew about filters knew about photoshop <laughs> and also like realize that the girls they followed so easily could do that to themselves because now it's not just celebrities being altered it's the average girl next door who like has a photo editing app and can totally change the way she looks. Yeah. And that's scary. Like even for myself, I need to remind my own like self sometimes when I'm scrolling through Instagram to be like, okay, take a step back, stop comparing yourself yeah. and remember like how to navigate this in a healthy way. And yeah. that's really difficult when you're eight to 14. Are you kidding me? Like you're just, you know, you're trying to wrap your mind around so many things about your own body. And then this whole new world is thrown at you to tell you what you're supposed to look like and what you're supposed to act like and what you should be putting on social media. I, I can only imagine how defeating it can be. Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of pressure. Even, even for myself, I, uh, I have a 15 minute timer on all my social media. After that, I'm locked out. I can't get back into it for a day. But what's funny was because of that, I, basically on those 15 minutes I post yeah so I post on all my accounts over the 15 minutes and then somebody said to me recently wow like you're really you're really active you know right now but I've never been less on social media right you know? and more more content but but like I did find that it's it's almost like I imagine it as like you're looking at a an egg timer you know what I mean so if your life is an egg timer and you just it's just sucking the sucking time away from you you know it's, it's but I I like that perspective. Like you give yourself X amount of time, but you're utilizing it in a really smart way. And yeah, I, I appreciate it. I don't have the code. Yeah. I don't have the passcode. So uh, there was a few times where I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't finish. Yeah. But then I'm just out. And then I'm just out. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's a good way. It's a good way to live right. on myself. Because it's super addictive, you know? Yeah. I mean, and I mean, and this is coming from a male perspective, which I love because I think often too, like I work so much with females and young girls, but this is equally as important to talk about yeah. with any gender, no matter what you identify as or with, like it is such an important topic just to check in with yourself. And for you that 15 minutes, like, you know, that that's your limit for some people it might be an hour, but yeah. if it's like what it is, that's healthy to you. Great. But it's exactly. anyone and everyone I think can fall under that. Exactly. And I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the Silicon Valley CEOs don't have social media or don't have smartphones. They do not. Yeah. Have it's so funny to me. They, just, they know <laughs> yeah. how the technology is designed to, you know, make you a slave to it. So you know, it's incredible. And there is a lot of benefit. My girlfriend uses Instagram so well, you know, she's always finding good restaurants and places yeah. to go on vacation. So, so she uses it well, but I would just be looking at, I'd be one of those stupid young guys looking at, you know, just uh, rolling and yeah. yeah supercar videos or whatever. So I'm like, nah, it's not really, it doesn't really add anything. No. And I think it's, um, it's funny because what I struggle with the most, and this is the same with my partner, we both have our own businesses and both our businesses have profiles online yes. and you get a lot of customer interaction. Your customers have questions. People want to talk to you. You need to pump out content. And then that's not even your own personal profile of your friends and your family. It's yeah. like a separate identity. And I think that's personally, what I really struggle with sometimes is how do you separate business time from personal time to no tech time? 
And we as like a partnership are still trying to figure that out because sometimes like you come home from the office, but oh, I have to post something or a customer is asking a question or you didn't post something you were supposed to. But it's like technically, you know, I think nighttime you should be like dinner, phones away, go for a run. Like that should be your detox. Yeah. But it's so blurred, especially because like everyone's locked in so much right now. Those yeah. lines are like right now. Right now, it's the, everybody is just glued to it. You know, it's uh, it's it's crazy. But yeah, it's interesting what you said. You come home like normally that time is should have been reserved or traditionally has been reserved for you know sitting down with your loved ones, eating you know communal time, and now you're still just being drawn back into it. So yeah, there's there's uh, positives and negatives like everything. Yeah, like and I, it's all in moderation. You just got to figure out what that moderation is for you. Yeah. If you're the 15 minutes, I give you so much credit because I think mine's at least an hour. But <laughs> I spread it out over the day, like you know, check in at different times. But yeah, um, yeah. I've had times where I ha where I haven't replied to people and I didn't know I got the message and I had to and I was like, oh, I you know, I should have replied here. Or I'm in the middle of a message and then I get the screen timeout and I'm like, and you're like, oh, that's gone. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'm sure the person who saw me read the message and then didn't reply wasn't too happy, but I Well, if you're listening, you know why now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I guess for me, it's, uh, for me, it's just a hard stop. And then it's, there's I have no excuse. Yeah. That's my time, you know? And if I spend 15 minutes doing something every day, unless it was something terrible, it couldn't be that bad, you know? I mean, like no, 15, exactly. 15 minutes or something, whatever. It's a, it's a long day when you're talking about 15 minutes. Um, so uh, your your clothing line, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? How how that's uh, evolved yeah. since you started? Um, so I started. I mean, yeah, like wasn't ever supposed to have my own clothing line. I always say that, like making that clear. I'm like not at all still a designer by any means, but again, kind of fell into it organically. We rounded a funding one year for the foundation, and I was so sick and tired of like hosting these small fundraisers that barely made us money that barely got us into the next quarter. And so I was like, I need to just streamline a way that there's constantly income coming in for that not for profit, but that does not involve so much work that I'm taken away from other work with the charity. So we eventually I just came up with like a, a t shirt. Um, we got a whole bunch of influencers together from Vancouver. It was the cool part about the shirt was like a great fabric. I'm um, a really nice, like body inclusive cut. So like it was very flowy. We did a lot of different sizing. Um, and there was a quote on it that was like placed over the shoulder, like where a tattoo would be. So like very subtle, um, branded, like very minimalistic. And we ended up selling out in three days and oh. yeah, people were really drawn to like the message and what we stood for. And, um, their next question was basically wins when's the next shirt coming out? And I kind of just slowly started to introduce more like, I guess, pieces. It wasn't even a brand at that point. It was literally just campaigns. Um, and yeah, three, almost three years now we've been into it and we're in about 60 stores across Canada. Whoa, nice. Um, yeah. So quite, we do, again, like our biggest business is wholesale. Yeah. Um, we have some amazing female boutique owners that carry us and really like stand behind our brand. Um, but I would describe it as like a, body positive brand that's like basics and essentials super soft materials um kind of almost loungewear meets like minimalistic office wear so you can dress things up you can dress things down um you can sleep in it if you want you can do yoga like everything is just very soft and flowy um but people are of all ages are really drawn to it so i think our demographic reaches quite a big kind of range and um yeah, it's been amazing to see it grow, but it's weird that it's kind of my full-time job now. Like, it's so great, but also I still, I think I'm in a bit of denial just because um, I just have so much fun doing it and it gives back at the same time to the charity. So for me, it's been just a really cool experience to see it very organically grow um, and allows me just to kind of focus on other projects too that I'd want to do. Nice. Cool. That's, uh, that's brilliant. Can I ask you, uh, what was the quote over the shoulder? The very first one? Yeah. Um, oh, it was a white tee. Um, I think it said, oh yeah, it said smile, smile, darling, you are beautiful. Cool. Yeah. And so it was like super basic, um, but it was all like cursive handwriting. And the cool part was, was like when you wore it even to the grocery store, 
if like your hair was to the side or if you had short hair, your hair was in a ponytail, so many times like the woman behind me waiting in line would be like, oh my gosh, like, and she'd read it out loud or she would be like, I just almost started crying reading the quote on your shirt. So it's almost like, you know, it's there, but it's so cool that someone else can like very subtly see it. Cool. Um, yeah. So kind of like pass on that good energy message, but all of them are very inspirational, um, but very subtle. Like nothing is branded like across the chest or like in big bold letters. It's very quaint. Yeah. yeah. Um, so something I, we run out of time. That was a quick 25 minutes. So something I ask uh, everybody that comes on, what advice would you give somebody uh, starting off today? So usually I'd say in your industry, but your industry is interesting because you're a, a charity and you're a, a fashion designer. So what advice would you give oh. to somebody starting? Just we'll say in any industry. Yeah, I, for any, and any project, not even if you're any sort of business, just a project in general, um, don't be afraid to seek out mentorship. Okay. I think that's one of the biggest things that I relied on. I never stopped asking questions. I also never stopped asking myself the why. Like, why, why am I doing this? Why is this important? And if you have an answer all the time to those why questions, then you should keep doing it. But if there's ever a point where you don't really know why you're doing something, or maybe you're doing something for the reasons that don't align with your values or your morals, then take a step back and try to realign. Um, but I find like mentorship kept me on pace and just always checking in with myself to make sure that I was doing like what I felt truly passionate about. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So yeah, like I said, we're out of time. Um, Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, Great hope, to meet you. Hope to, have you. hope to have you again in the future. So uh, we host a lot of networking events and stuff in the city. Uh, Trey's has been to them and things like that. So we'd love to have you um, again in the future. Yeah, as soon as we can like all see each other again, count me in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.